The Orff Schulberg is wonderful in leading children to discovery because everything about it is open-ended. It's all about the creativity and releasing that from the child. Whether it's from the playful movement and from the movement aspect, the fact that they're creating their own melodies, taking melodies and snippets and putting them together to discover known melodies, the whole process is a, matter, it's a journey of discovery. Erica, what did you notice? That the do do t t la la so so la la t t do is the same as simple sign and metaphor. Oh, that's the same. So what we sang over here was the exact match for the melody there? Yeah. Oh, excellent. So students learn to make music by doing something that makes such good pedagogical sense. They start with something they know and they move it into a new arena. And they move it into a new arena with skillful questioning on the part of the teacher that encourages them to explore just a little bit further each time. This is the way children learn to practice collaboration. They practice communication, they practice critical thinking, they practice creativity, and the Orff Schulwerk teachers have mastered this for years. Simple sign in meta and going to the fair. The singing and starting from the solfege is just really getting their brains warmed up, getting them thinking about the musical place and that I want to take them to. And so it's really the matter of framing the learning and opening the door for what's to come next. Here we go. I want to do it twice in a row. Can we do it twice in a row? Yep. Here we go. The children learn through exploring and doing things and manipulating things for themselves. So as a teacher, it's very thrilling to be able to teach music that way and know that you are engaging children in the way they most like to learn. So if you were Simple Simon and you were this happy-go-lucky little guy, how would you move? I'm going to play the la-la-la part of my recorder, and I'm going to see how might you move if you were Simple Simon. Stand up. Carl Orff recognized the fact that music and movement were intertwined, and, and they really go hand in hand and are joined. There's nothing that brings music to life more than the attachment of music and movement together. It's that marriage that makes the magic in the shoulder. You could both could skip around together doing the same thing. One could, person could be stationary, the other person could be moving. Two people could be moving at the same time. Hmm. If there's more than two people, how would you work that out? I don't know. I'm going to let you figure it out. When you're watching children in the creative movement aspect of the shoulder, you see the joy on their faces. That's when the music really comes to life, and that's when they really take ownership of it, because it's their ideas. They're creating the movement. They're creating the journey and the pathway that they're going on with this music. The element of play is really important in the shoulder. And we can draw from various games that children love to play to begin to sneak in some of these concepts that we want them to apply in more complex pieces of music. So by entering simple games and hand games that children play, we were able to move and manipulate that game into a new way of playing the game that would incorporate some of the rhythms that were found in the refrain section of Simple Simon. So by playing that game, the kids thought they were playing a game, but really in the back of my mind, I was planting the seed for a new rhythm pattern that they were going to use later. What other kinds of pies might he be interested in buying? Anders, what might he be interested in? Oh, will you clap blueberry? Blueberry. Oh, we have strawberry, blueberry. I want something other than the berry kinds of pies. Oh, hello. Gabby. Pineapple? Oh, we could do pineapple. pineapple. Do pineapple. Pineapple. I have never had pineapple pie. In an Orr Silver classroom, I think the children begin to engage in some things that I might call habits of mind. They get a habit of mind of collaborating with their peers. They practice it a lot, and they become comfortable with it. They get a habit of mind of solving problems and being critical problem solvers. And they can carry that forward into other areas. They get a habit of being creative and knowing that they are creative beings and that they can take that forward with them. You can either choose to stick with strawberry, apple, marshmallow, pie, or you might want to choose something else that's four beats. When you're at the Bard Instruments and you're inviting children to improvise and create their own melodies, 
you can't give them everything at once. You can't just expect them to know on their own. We start with small parameters to give them a comfort zone. We give them some stru structure and scaffolding to work with. And from there, we open up the door and gradually invite more tones in so that they are working with a larger spectrum of sound. And then, just by playing it with on their own, they make these discoveries like, gee, it doesn't sound finished when we end on this note. Or if we end on a quarter note, it sounds more final. They begin to create their own musical meaning, something very abstract, such as music in a very concrete way on an instrument where they can play with and fool around with the different notes and different bars and actually make some meaning of this very abstract thing we call music. Do you have to stick with the same rhythm? Does it have to be eight beats? Yeah. Has to end on do, has to be eight beats. When we ask children to improvise, we set them up with parameters that we know they're going to be successful in. And we ask them to complete tasks and challenge them with tasks where we know they have the confidence to share with others, where we know they will feel successful. Ready, two of them, go. Now you sound like you're more confident. I think students enjoy most in the Orr Schulwerk approach that they have ownership over what they do. It's theirs. It comes from them. It's not laid on them, and they're not trying to live up to an expectation that a teacher says it has to happen and sound like this. They create it. And in the process of doing that, they learn very quickly when it's good as well. They know that because they own it.